Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my experience in Las Vegas, mentioning several trips, showing several hotels and photos. Hope you enjoy it. So I named it Vegas for beginners because I'm also sharing my initial uh, impressions, how I felt when I first got there, when I first saw it. Um, and you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Wow, not in my case because I just decided to share it with you in a video. You're probably wondering why am I wearing this sparkly metallic dress? And the truth is, yes, it's New Year's, it's festive time, Christmassy time, but I just finished um, filming my other video coming out next Thursday about New Year's, New Year's Eve outfits. Uh, and ideas that you can borrow and you can use for this New Year's Eve party. So stay tuned next Thursday, a week from now. Also subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, click the like button if you like this video, if you like the content I'm sharing. I've been to Vegas several times, uh, more than 10. Um, basically, I'm going to focus on two trips in this video. The first one was last March, which was at the Venetian Hotel. But stay tuned until the end because the second one at the Cosmopolitan, which was a more recent one from this summer, it's really gonna blow your mind. So you grow up with this idea of Vegas and how grandiose it is and all these parties that are going on there, you know, Sin City, city that never sleeps. And it's actually really true. Uh, when you just land into the Las Vegas airport, the airport itself is really close to the Strip. And the Strip is the street. Um, downtown in Vegas, where all the attractions, all the hotels, all the casinos, shops, restaurants, they're all located on this one street. There's more than enough entertainment on that one street, the strip, to keep you entertained. So as you land into the Vegas airport, um, the first thing you can see if you are sitting on the correct side of the airport is actually the strip because it's very close by. And you see it, you see all these attractions, you know, the Eiffel Tower, uh, the wheel, and it, you already start getting excited that you're actually in Vegas. And just leaving the airport, you already feel, yes, I'm here, I've arrived. So the first trip I'm mentioning was in January, and you may think that because Vegas is in a desert, it's in Nevada, you, are gonna feel hot or it's always warm and nice. No, in January, in winter time, it's actually cold. So make sure you're aware of that and you do your research before traveling. Anyway, I got there. As soon as I exited the airport and got into a cab to go to my hotel, which is a short drive, you know, all these lights just hit me. The city is so grandiose, it's so sparkly. As you're driving towards your uh, hotel, you don't even know where to look and the excitement already built up. Then I arrived at the Venetian. In this hotel is called the Venetian because it's like the city of Venice placed in a hotel. There's so many attractions, these huge canals, gondolas that you can actually, you know, ride, water running inside the hotel. It's a city within a hotel. And I have a feeling that that's the case with most Vegas hotels that um, most of them are so big, they have theaters inside, huge casinos, shops, many restaurants, many bars, clubs. You really, really feel like you don't even need to exit. And that's the case with the Venetian as well. So I entered there uh, as soon as I got my room at the reception. I almost got lost on my way to the room because it's so big. And also, before you actually get to the elevators for the rooms, you have to go through this casino, which is huge, an enormous lobby, you know, all decorated, a lot of tourists, a lot of noise everywhere around you. It literally took me 15 minutes to get from the reception area to my room. It's so big and it's designed in a way to always keep your senses attacked with music, lights, uh, sparkly things, noise, entertainment, sights. So I got to my room and the Venetian rooms are not your typical standard rooms like you may have seen in many hotels in Europe. I feel like hotels in the US in general have bigger rooms, but this one was huge. And I stayed at a, stand and I stayed at a standard room, which looked like a suite, because as soon as you enter, there is this huge bed, king size bed, and then, when you pass the, the bedroom sort of area, you can go down actually to a living room, to another level of the room suite. 
and you know you have a couch a seating area you have a tv and then you get to the windows and you just see vegas the strip and the lights but also one of my favorite features of the room itself was the walk-in closet there was a gorgeous huge bathroom but also a walk-in closet which if you're like me and you like to pack so much stuff even if you're there for a couple of days this is a great feature i rearranged my clothes i unpacked also i love taking photos whenever i put another outfit on just before going out one of my favorite features about the hotel the venetian is the lobby with a huge love sign great for photo opportunities everything is huge there and literally it takes so much time i wish they had a taxi service within the hotel if there were actual streets because you have to walk to go from the casino to the canals everywhere so you pass the lobby and there is San Marco Square. Yes, the replica of San Marco Square, Square from Venice. It's within the hotel with actual restaurants and coffee places and bars around it. And then you pass the San Marco Square and you see the canals. So the canals actually have a running water. It's like a maze. Uh, they have many uh, boutiques, many stores uh, on the canals. You can even ride the gondola. It's just out of this world. It feels like you're in Venice. And the, the best feature is the roof. It's actually a sky. It's painted like a sky. So you never know what time it is. It always feels like daylight. But that's another feature about Vegas that I wanted to mention. They don't really have any clocks on the walls. They don't really wanna, want you to know what time it is. The hotel keeps on pumping oxygen through the air conditioning system. So you're always awake, you're always alert. You don't feel like sleeping everything to keep you entertained to keep you gambling there's people on the casino slots at 5 a.m because they've lost track of time and that's the whole point you'd never feel like you want to go to bed because there's so much to do so many things to see but also after that you crash because your body's running on a couple of hours of sleep you don't feel like you need it while there when your trip ends and when you go back back to reality you crash because you're so exhausted and you realize, oh my God, I'm running on five hours of sleep for the last three days. Yes, the canals, uh, the Venetian is an amazing place. There's so many restaurants, Mexican, Italian, American, fast food places. There's even several lounges and bars. The Electra Bar, the Darcy Lounge, I think, the Bellini Bar, and my personal favorite, Tao Asian Bistro, which during the day works as an Asian restaurant lounge type of place, but at night it transformed into a Tao, into the famous Tao club. So a lot of fun places around there, many things to do. There is even a pool area, which I didn't really get to explore fully because as I said, I was there in January when I stayed at the Venetian and it wasn't the time for you know, sunbathing and swimming. Also, I was there on a business trip, so didn't have a lot of time. Now, my second uh, trip that I'll mention was actually this past summer in June at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, again, located on the street right next to the Bellagio Hotel. This is one of my favorite hotels in Vegas because it has so many good features that I like. First of all, the one thing that blew me away is the huge giant chandelier in the middle of the hotel in the casino that rides ride all the way up several stores. And it's so big, it even has a bar situated within it. But it's such a stunning feature, all these lights, all the sparkles, um, a huge casino. And this time when I arrived in Vegas, I think it was um, nighttime around 10 or 11 p.m and just riding with the cab towards the hotel. I didn't want to sleep, I didn't feel jet, jet lag, even though I was coming from Europe. The only thing I wanted to do is just go to my room, get dressed and get down there and feel that atmosphere, feel the partying, um, you know, vibe and hype and you know, all the people having fun, casinos, music, you name it. So that's what I did. Uh, immediately after checking in, the room was gorgeous. I went down and um, you know checked out some of the fun around the casino, around that area. You exit the hotel, you're right on the street with all these attractions at your fingertips. The one feature that I liked about my room at the Cosmopolitan was the fact that I was overlooking the Bellagio fountains and the strip itself. 
and they have this really nice choreographed show which you know if you time it well you can actually see it from the window and you know you wake up to this side you go to bed with this side it's just stunning because i'm not a big partying person i don't do clubbing a lot i don't like to drink alcohol a lot i'm not that much into vices so for me Fun in Vegas means suntanning and, you know, lounging and enjoying a little sweet cocktail by the pool. So imagine my satisfaction this time around because it was June and I got to spend a couple of days by the pools. And believe me, the Cosmopolitan has so many amazing pools. It's such a pleasure just to be there. Again, like at the Venetian, this is a huge hotel with so many things inside. They have so many restaurants where to eat, you know, the Chelsea Club, um, the Marquee Club, which is one of my favorite clubs because celebrities are known to go partying there, um, like Leonardo DiCaprio, the Kardashians. So yes, this is a very famous location and it's open six days a week, probably actually seven, but Mondays are industry days. So Vegas parties nonstop all the time. One of the pools, the Chelsea pool, is located on the 14th floor. So the Cosmopolitan has several towers. Um, the Chelsea Tower has the Chelsea pool on the 14th floor. And immediately as you go out, there is even a jacuzzi tub uh, on one end. You have a couple of bars and restaurants around there. But the most stunning thing about it is the view. You're overlooking the strip. You feel like you're, uh, you know, you, it, this is a real, surreal. So as you are sipping a cocktail and lounging by the pool, you are enjoying the best view ever. And then also there is the, the Boulevard pool, which is located on the fourth floor in the Boulevard Tower. Um, and this is um, not your typical pool for swimming. It's mostly a very shallow pool where you can basically lounge. There's even this nice lounges in the water just for you to kind of dip your feet in the water, um, have parties. Yeah, this is my favorite pool out of all. It's designed to kind of have you and your friends lounge, not for the swim, but just sit around and enjoy a cocktail, the music, you know, just chat. It's almost like a pool bar, if you can say that. They even have a cinema on, a, on some days at the Boulevard pool because there's a huge screen on one end and you can just basically lie on the lounges in the pool. You can sit by the bar or outside on the um, sun tanning chairs and basically watch a movie all the while um, enjoying a pool atmosphere. So this is my favorite pool, I love it. The views are also stunning, just like at the Chelsea pool. It just feels out of this world. And then the Marquee pool as well, the third one at the Cosmopolitan, which is an extension of the Marquee Club. And you know, they mostly do day parties, they mostly do phone parties. It's a clubbing pool with DJs. Again, a great atmosphere to experience. Hiya. Walking in the scorching Vegas heat. It's probably 40 degrees outside. And this gorgeous place behind me, the biggest strip. Oh, but I really needed this after the rain and clouds and cold weather in London. So, yay! You're probably wondering why I haven't mentioned gambling yet. I didn't mention casino, I didn't mention all the sparkles. And the reason is, out of the 10 times or more that I've been to Vegas, I've only gambled this last time. I'm not a vice person. As I said, I don't like drinking a lot. I don't like clubbing a lot. Um, so I wasn't that much into gambling, but so my last trip, one of my colleagues, she said, well, you are in a perfect position to actually try your luck at gambling because apparently, Vegas algorithms and cameras have a certain way of recognizing facial recognition and if you're someone who's just a new face that just went to the casino um, you have a better chance of winning because they want to hook you they want to give you a little bit of money like have you win something and then you're back gambling there again so she said you're perfect a perfect candidate let's have you go and gamble she advised me to put uh, in $50 to start off with and guess what? Yes, I lost everything. So within three minutes, I was down to 0 0.11 cents. So embarrassing. And that's it. I never really liked gambling to begin with, but after losing my first 
fifty dollars. I was like, mm -mm, not for me. That's it. Thank you, Vegas. I'm gonna stick to my pools, suntanning, enjoying, you know, cocktails and food. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed my recap of my Vegas trip. It's definitely something that I recommend for everyone if you have the chance to go and experience it. Because it doesn't matter if you're a gambling person, a partying person, or just you know someone who likes visiting new locations. Vegas has to offer a little bit of everything. It's such a sensory overload. You have all these lights and music and partying and you know just fun atmosphere, and it really is out of this world. I hope you like my video, subscribe to my channel, click the bell button for notifications and as you may have guessed already, my uploading schedule is every Sunday and every Thursday. This Sunday, I'm gonna have a special Christmassy edition prepared for you, so stay tuned and make sure you come back for that video. Bye bye!